So this is what we uh, use to get to the editing. Uh, actually, I'll just quickly go into edit. So and punch into a sound. Um, so yeah, we've got uh, quick edits across the top here. Uh, so the mixer levels for each of the four operators and on the shift of those, you select, rather than holding buttons actually in this mode, you just select different pages. Uh, so then on the shift version, we've got feedback for each operator and down at the bottom here, we've got ratio frequency fine for each of the four operators. So on the shift version, we've got the level internal level and detune for each. These are just the quick edits. Um, the main bulk of it's done across the bottom. So these buttons select the four different operators. Again, with a main and a shift version of each one. So for example, uh, this, if we press that operator and that button, that's our uh, ratio frequency setting. And then level, detune, velocity sensitivity, uh, you've got an eight stage envelope uh, with attack, uh, decay, sustain, and release level and time. Uh, time scale uh, for each of the envelopes. And then we've got um, level scaling uh, positions and rates and um, curves for up and down parts of the envelopes, uh, fixed frequency option. Uh, pitch envelopes send, so basically uh, there's a, a single pitch envelope which is in the mixer. So that's our that's our envelope for pitch, uh, with a choice to send each of the operators to that. And then each, so our edits are made, so for example if you press 1 and then 1, that is our feedback amount. And then you can adjust it with, um, so that is going between negative and positive feedback and you can nudge it around with the little encoder which is great so you can sweep it into a rough position and then kind of tweak it to the exact amount that you want things to be at then we've got we can copy other patches in to the memory so you can duplicate something and then edit it which is really useful uh, uh, export name your patch and uh, anything else I haven't covered there I think that's it, isn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, and but this this knob acts as velocity while we're in. Uh, oh, this patch doesn't have any velocity. <laughs> yeah, so there's no velocity set up on this one, um, but that's an option of for each of the operators separately. So yeah, all these these settings here are per uh, operator, and they're all the same. So there's no you know there's no like this operator does feedback and these ones don't. They're all exactly the same. The general yeah. workflow, yeah, is that is that lower uh, all the sequencer steps are going to let you get in there and change like individual uh, parameters for each operator. So when you really want to dial it in, whereas the top area that used to be blue and now is outlined in white is kind of like your quick ability to yeah. adjust the levels of your oscillators and how much they're feeding into each other and how much of their signal is feeding into the main mixer. It kind of fits our philosophy of making the most important quick edits on the surface. And then if you want to go deeper, you can go deeper. Yeah. And also just for balancing a sound once you've made it, um, it's like a yeah. whole having a whole mixer there ready to go. So I, I'm, I'm sort of, in summary, I'm kind of seeing, so these are the kind of new benefits. The new benefits are there's a bit more of a simplistic way of getting to an FM sound if you're into sort of some basic sound design without yeah. having to get broiled into the algorithm. And then once you've done that, you can then morph between the two and then you might even find that somewhere in between that morph, you like how that sounds so you can actually save that now as a patch. So this is kind of like a sound designer's dream for FM. And then yeah. you might want to go, okay, now I'm kind of understanding FM a bit more. Let's go into the, you know, the, the algorithm side and let's see kind of how that actually can, would actually look at the sort of nuts and bolts sine wave level. Yeah. So you can even do that. So it's really, really quite intuitive. Now, one last question from me, and that is, is there anything to do with editing this on a computer or is this all purely just at the hardware level? Is there any computer-based um, MIDI version editor or anything like that or anything planned in the future? We don't 
currently have plans for a computer-based editor, but it does this synth does respond to CC messages. So we're still kind of working out how we want to implement that and how deeply we want to go with MIDI CC control. But a fair amount of the controls will be controllable by CC. So if, for example, you're using Ableton, there's a lot of devices now where you can turn a knob in Mm. Ableton and define its CC. So you could make an editor within Ableton that would control a lot of the parameters within the uh, the XFM. It's not like you're full on... uh, you know, model cycles, I mean, model, you know, uh, electron ecosystem thing where you can bring up all the controls on a huge screen. Uh, yeah. We are a very small team and we are not there yet. <laughs> yeah. But hopefully the controls on it will provide enough interface that uh, you can get in there and edit it without needing to connect an LCD. If you need to connect a, a monitor to our synth, then we failed in the UI and we should go back to the drawing board <laughs> at that point. Oh, there's there's been there's been some really good arguments about that lately with uh, synth design, and that is, um, you know, over the years the screen has been the biggest argument, and people were saying, I don't like menu diving, mm-hmm. so get rid of the screen, and maybe that might be half the problem that everyone's got. Um, so what do we have like this sixty inch screen on a synth? Is that going to help everyone, or should we just get rid of it completely and just make the UI that intuitive that we actually don't need one? Yeah. So you've got you've got kind of two camps there, haven't you? Um, in terms of MIDI, mm-hmm. I had one other question that s- sort of came in through the chat. I think it was, uh, does it going to have SysX? Um, are they going to release the SysX information? And I just want to add to that. Um, you mentioned CCs. Um, maybe perhaps mm-hmm. some sort of NRPN um, implementation, or, or is that just all part of the CC side of it? Is that kind of what you guys are looking at? Um, I am not sure what that means. <laughs> okay, so NRPM. What do you mean by NRPM? Um, so, so SysX is kind of like the real, you know, nerdy level of MIDI, right? And then NRPNs are kind mm-hmm. of like the non-registered parameter numbers that MIDI uh, talks. So there's there's RPNs, which is what all CC messages talks. Like for example, CC message one is, uh, you know, it's already in the MIDI standard. NRPNs are out of the MIDI standard, and a software developer can allocate any of them to whatever he decides to. And if, if um, Dr. Hughes decided that he wants to use NRPNs, he should have a table of what he's he's used for them. And basically what we're asking is, is that table of MIDI parameters going to be publicized so that we can we can manipulate it? Uh, and, yes. You know. <laughs> yeah, so um, if you go on the Sonicware website, um, which is sonicware.jp, um, we uh, share the MIDI implementation on there. So Fantastic. that will show like all the MIDI CCs. So if you want to map it to something else like external controller or Ableton or um, whatever else, um, yeah, it's, it, it works essentially how you've described. There's just a list of MIDI CCs and then a list of parameters that it, um, that it controls. Right now, we're still kind of in development of the MIDI spec of this, so we're not sure exactly how many of those knobs are going to be MIDI CC controllable or not. Um, so that's a little bit up in the air, so I don't want to make any promises on that. Um, in terms of SysX, we haven't released the SysX standard for um, our patches and stuff. So at this point, it isn't possible to look at this, you know, look at the SysX and kind of reverse engineer it. I'm sure people could, um, but at this point, we haven't released that uh, to the public yet. All right. So this is the MIDI implementation chart that is actually on the website. Now, I don't know if I can zoom in or not, mm-hmm. but I don't even know if I can scroll or not. Uh, maybe I can scroll. Maybe I can't. Here we go. There you go. <laughs> So it, that's already there. You guys can go check that out. I'll, I'll actually paste the link that uh, this is what um, Evan was just talking to us about. So mm-hmm. I'll paste that into the chat. You guys can go check it out. That is already there. So you guys can go um, put your propeller hats on and go midi crazy. 